In this series, I'm attempting to play and review every single Nintendo 64 game in alphabetical order. In the last video, we explored the titles that began with numbers, and this time we're taking a look at every game that starts with the letter A. There are 16 games in this section. Let's get into it. Aero Fighters Assault Known as Sonic Wings Assault in Japan, Aero Fighters Assault is a flight combat game that puts you in the cockpit of one of several fighter jets as you go from mission to mission shooting down all kinds of enemies. You have airborne enemies as well as land and sea units. There are a lot of typical planes and boats, but also some cool futuristic stuff like walking tanks. In my opinion though, the series should have stayed true to its 2D shoot 'em up roots. Those were fun, slightly silly, fast paced, exciting games. This one, not so much. My first issue was with the controls, they take a while to get used to. Most of the footage you're seeing is probably me just struggling to fly the plane. Even after I began to get the hang of it though, I just found the whole thing to be way too slow. Some missions will give you a time limit and end rather quickly. Other missions will drag on for ages. It gets old. I can forgive the bad voice acting, but the gameplay itself just feels too awkward. Give me a game like Crimson Skies with super tight zippy controls. Not this thing where it feels like it takes 10 minutes just to turn around. Still, if you're into these slower kinds of flight combat sim games, you might have a good time with this one. You can even play two player versus mode with a friend. But fans of the classic Aero Fighters games will most likely be disappointed. Bummer, that's bogus. Aero Gauge Aero Gauge is a futuristic racing game where you pilot flying cars in high speed races. It's different from games like F-Zero and Wipeout in that you don't just hover but can freely fly through the air. It's also different from those other games because those other games are actually good. Aero Gauge is almost offensive in its shortcomings. It had the potential to be something truly great and that's what's so upsetting about it. First of all, there are only six tracks in the whole game and you only start out with four of them unlocked. Good luck trying to get the other two because there's almost no way to keep up with those NPCs unless you're absolutely perfect. The game also suffers from some really poor draw distance. This isn't just an emulation problem you're seeing, this is actually how the game is and it's been a common criticism ever since it came out. I really wanted to like this game, it had a lot going for it, but in the end it's just a half-baked experience with an insulting lack of content. To make things even more monotonous, you'll have to play through each track twice in Grand Prix mode. First a time trial and then the actual race. Like that would somehow make up for the less than acceptable number of tracks the game has to offer. It just prolongs the pain. I am not happy. AI Shogi 3 Shogi is an ancient Japanese board game that is very similar to chess, but few people outside of Japan actually know how to play it. I am no exception. I wasn't about to study the complexities of Shogi for this video either, so sorry about that. But if you want to play Shogi on N64, here you go. Aiden Chronicles The First Mage Aiden Chronicles The First Mage is a turn-based open-world fantasy RPG. You play as Alaron, a young squire with good intentions and a knack for getting into trouble. One day you get poisoned by goblins and start experiencing troubling visions. You recruit a team and venture out of town to find a cure and perhaps a path to knighthood. From what I've gathered, people tend to either love or hate this game. I'm sorry to say I fall into the latter group. Fans praise the game for being so expansive, so ambitious, and so ahead of its time in many ways. It has a giant open world to explore, a decent story that takes upwards of 50 hours to complete, and deep character customization. But for me, it was just a chore to play. My main issue is its pacing. Everything is just so slow and dull. Your character walks around at a snail's pace, which does nothing to make the already boring environments any more pleasant to traverse. An open world should be fun to explore, but I did not have any fun with this title at all. I didn't care about the characters or the story, it all felt very generic and uninspired. The gameplay was simply not exciting, and the environments were way more confusing than they needed to be thanks to a clumsy camera and areas that look way too similar to one another. Oh yeah, and then there's permadeath. You lose a companion in battle and they're gone forever. No revives here. Whether that's a good feature or not is subjective. As I said earlier, there are quite a few dedicated fans of this game out there, but I'm just not one of them. Airboarder 64 Here's another case of a cool concept executed poorly. In Airboarder 64, you get to ride around on a cool hoverboard doing tricks Tony Hawk style. Kind of. 
The problems here are that the controls feel very clunky and unlike Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, there's actually very little to do. You have only a small handful of levels to skate around in. There are several game modes, but they all feel too similar. Pick from a small selection of riders and boards and get as many points as you can before you run out of time. Or just play around for fun and free run. There's also a coin mode that tasks you with collecting coins scattered around the areas, as well as a two player mode. But unfortunately it just feels way too wonky and short on content. I wish this was a better game because they were clearly onto something very cool. All Star Tennis 99 My experience with tennis games has basically been limited to Mario Tennis and Virtua Tennis. All Star Tennis 99 doesn't live up to either of those games, but on the bright side it does have some good things going for it. You have your standard singles and doubles tournaments and quick matches, multiplayer support, and a significant roster of athletes and courts from around the world. It's a fairly realistic tennis game, but if you want to throw in some crazy arcade elements, they've got you covered there too. There's an option to enable special moves, like creating a portal that sucks up the ball and then shoots it out extremely fast. My favorite inclusion, however, is the bomb mode, where bombs appear on the court wherever the ball happens to bounce. These bombs explode after a few seconds, knocking you down if you're too close and costing you the point. But despite these fun features, I found the game to be just pretty bland overall. It's way too easy to hit the ball out of bounds or to simply not hit the ball at all because your player swings the racket in a stupid way, or dives for no reason. I also found the computer AI to be pretty bad. Sometimes they don't even bother going after the ball, they just stand still instead. In the end, it's simply an okay tennis game. All-Star Baseball 99 The first of three games in the series we'll cover, All-Star Baseball 99 is exactly what you'd expect from a baseball sim of its era. You get a full roster of MLB teams, multiplayer support for up to four players, and a variety of game modes including quick play, season, general manager, and home run derby. There are also tons of options to alter the game to your liking, such as pitch assistance and whether players can become injured. You can choose between arcade and simulation gameplay, but to be honest, I couldn't really tell the difference in this one. The gameplay is very similar to any other baseball game that has come out in the past couple of decades. The graphics are obviously dated, but they don't look too bad for their age. The announcers could use more lines, but they did a pretty good job overall. What else can I say, it's a 20 something year old sports game, not the most exciting thing to talk about, and we have two more of them to cover so let's quickly move on to the next one. All Star Baseball 2000 Same game, new year. As to be expected with an annual sports game release, it's largely the same as the previous one with some minor improvements. Slightly better graphics, updated player rosters, and new announcer dialogue. The pitching system is a little nicer in this one too. In the previous game, it was hard for both sides to know where a pitch was going. This time around, it's a bit easier to aim your pitch and follow the ball. Even though you can see the guide, you'll still have a hard time predicting it though as the batter, which makes things interesting. You don't know if the ball will suddenly break or curve in the air, so you'll have to have fast reflexes and a keen eye. Overall, a solid entry in the series. All-Star Baseball 2001 The last and best entry in the series on the N64 all-Star Baseball 2001 once again serves up a very similar game with slight improvements over its predecessors. It's the best looking and sounding title in the series, and it even seems to play a bit smoother. Everything feels more alive this time around. But still, it's basically the same experience all over again. I did enjoy the option to jump into a quick arcade style game where the more complex pitching and batting mechanics have been simplified. No more pitching, hitting box, it all plays like the old school Sega Genesis baseball games I grew up with, or perhaps more like MLB Slugfest without all the punching and nonsense. Of course the meat of the game still lies in the simulation modes, but it was a nice detour anyways. Armorines, Project Swarm Finally we're done with sports and shogi, let's take a look at a sci-fi first person shooter. In Armorines Project Swarm, you play as an armored marine who must fight to save the world from an alien race of giant insect-like creatures. You can choose from one of two characters. There's a male character who has stronger firepower but is slower, and a female character who has less firepower but is much faster. In each level, there are several basic objectives to carry out. Yes, you will be shooting a lot of bugs, but you'll also be looking for ways to open doors, disable bombs, and rescue people. 
There are also some fun on rails segments that I unfortunately couldn't capture any decent footage of because of emulation glitches. Sorry about that. I feel like I would really like this game if it had better controls. You walk around with the C buttons and use the analog stick to aim. This was a fairly common mechanic back in the day, but years of playing other games have trained me to want to use my left thumb to walk and my right thumb to aim. Making matters worse, you're stuck with an inverted aim that cannot be changed. The whole thing just feels backwards and upside down to me. I had a worse time battling the controls than any alien in the game. For some functions, you'll also need to use the D-pad, as if you had three hands. Seriously, the controls are just awful. Oh, and did I mention that you have to hold the A and B buttons together to reload? This makes moving while reloading nearly impossible since your whole thumb will be pressing on the A and B buttons instead of being able to use the C buttons. <sighs> Other than that, I would have loved the game. It seems to have a lot going for it. Perhaps I could get used to the controls with time. My only other complaint is that there are a lot of very dark areas, making it hard to see enemies and objectives. You do have some infrared goggles, but again you have to inconveniently reach over to the left d-pad to use it, and it takes away your aim assist while wearing them, and I already had a hard enough time trying to aim with the awkward inverted controls. I didn't get to check out the multiplayer modes, but the campaign has two player co-op support, and there are competitive modes for up to four players. If you can wrap your head around the wonky controls, you'll find a decent shooter underneath. Army Men Air Combat The Army Men series has seen a ton of different games that span multiple genres. There's an RTS game and several third person shooters, but Army Men Air Combat is different from all the other ones I've played. As the name suggests, it's an aerial combat game. You get to fly around in a helicopter shooting at bad guys, picking up loot, and carrying out a number of objectives. It's surprisingly good. The first several missions had me blowing up tons of enemies, escorting a toy train, stopping cars from entering friendly territory, and unleashing swarms of insects to attack my foes for me. It's all in good clean fun with a very light-hearted presentation. The graphics look pretty good and the vehicles control perfectly. I only wish you had some control over the camera since your depth of view is very limited with the almost top-down view but it's all very manageable and all very fun. There's also two player co-op and competitive modes to check out, but sadly, I can't comment on those. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised by Army Men Air Combat. It's definitely worth a play. Army Men Sarge's Heroes Man, I used to love this game as a kid. At least I loved the multiplayer deathmatch mode. I remember the campaign being too hard, but surely as an adult I would find it easier, right? Well, yes, actually. The thing is, it's only difficult for the wrong reasons, like the shoddy camera controls. It simply doesn't do a good job of following you while you're moving. You essentially have to stop running to turn the camera, which is kind of hard to do when there are enemies all around. Luckily, the enemies tend to be very stupid, at least on easier difficulties. Sometimes they'll just stand right behind you and not do anything to you. The controls took some getting used to as well. It took me about 20 minutes of dying before I figured out how to strafe and then it was pretty much smooth sailing. On the bright side, there's plenty of diversity in the level designs and mission objectives, and lots of different weapons to play with. I always love the setting of these army men games, and this one sees you starting out in a fairly realistic war zone environment, only to be transported to the human world, where it becomes obvious that you're just a tiny toy in a giant world. One minute you're in a desert bunker, and the next you're in a giant bathroom. If you can get over the frustrating camera and controls, there's a decent amount of fun to be had with Sarge's Heroes, especially if you have a few friends you can go head to head with. Army Man Sarge's Heroes 2 Army Man Sarge's Heroes 2 picks up right where the first game left off, and the stakes are higher than ever as the war between green and tan armies comes to a climax. We've learned that soldiers who stay in the human world for too long turn into lifeless plastic statues. The Tan Army have found a serum to reverse this, and the Green Army intends to find it and use it to revive their fallen men and win the war. For the most part, it's more of the same third-person shooting gameplay of the original. The look speed is noticeably faster, which is nice. The graphics are a little better, and the environments are a little more interesting and varied. Four-player multiplayer is back as well. Really, it's just more of the same, and if you like the original, I think you'll be very happy with this one. Asteroids Hyper 64 
Everybody knows asteroids, right? It's one of the oldest arcade shooters. You pilot a ship through space and blast asteroids to smithereens, basically. Well, Asteroids Hyper 64 takes the same basic concept from the arcade original and breathes new life into it with modern 1999 graphics, new multiplayer modes, and additional gameplay tweaks, like special weapons and a shield. It starts out easy enough, but as you go on you'll face more and more kinds of asteroids, enemies, and obstacles. There are ice asteroids, which regenerate if you take too long to blow up any of the pieces. Indestructible space vehicles that try to crash into you, fast moving comets, and so much more. To be honest, I appreciate asteroids for its impact on gaming, but it's never been able to hold my attention for too long. This entry isn't any exception. But if you're a fan of asteroids, you'll probably love this one. Automobili Lamborghini Automobili Lamborghini is an arcade racing game that features a variety of supercars, not only Lamborghinis. You'll be able to unlock a couple Ferraris, a McLaren, a Dodge Viper, and more. It plays very much like other arcade racers of its era, with very tight handling and a focus on simple fast racing. The game looks really nice with a variety of outdoor environments and some nice effects like lens flare and fog to add a little bit more realism. On top of this is an adrenaline pumping electronic soundtrack. There's an arcade mode where your biggest enemy is not the other racers, but the clock that needs to be constantly fed by reaching checkpoints. Not even the other racers can keep up with the clock's demands. I was in first place and still managed to run out of time. Luckily you can skip this aspect by playing the championship mode in which you just aim to rank highest over a series of races. Your car will also take damage in this mode, encouraging you to make some occasional pit stops during races. Overall, it's a pretty fun game and it supports up to four player split screen. Its biggest drawback is a small number of tracks. Remember earlier when I was complaining about Arrow Gauge only having six tracks? Well, guess how many tracks are in this game? That's right, six. Was this really acceptable back then? Luckily, the core of the game is much better than Arrow Gauge, leaving me much less salty about its shortcomings. A decent racer for sure, but the Nintendo 64 has absolutely no shortage of great racing games. Automobili Lamborghini Super Speed Race 64 Super Speed Race 64 is the version of Automobili Lamborghini that was released in Japan. It's basically the same game with a few minor features added. The biggest feature is letting you change the time of day and weather. Now you can race at night or on a wet day with slippery roads and fog that lowers your visibility. You can also change the controls to your liking, which is nice because whoever decided to put the handbrake on C-Right was a fool. They also added a photo slideshow and included the names for at least some of the cars on the car selection screen. Not much else has changed, but Wikipedia counts it as a separate game, so I'm doing the same. And there you have it, those were all 16 Nintendo 64 games that begin with the letter A. Next time we'll explore all 25 games that begin with the letter B. If you want to keep up with the series, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.